Maybe I'm a little late to the party, but I recently came across a channel called Beyond Science, which has a little over 2 million subscribers. Given the name, I thought it would be a type of science channel, and I was pretty interested because I watch educational and science-based YouTube videos every day. But this channel isn't quite that. Here's its creator explaining the channel. I started Beyond Science a few years ago because I wanted to explore topics such as the unexplained, uh, UFOs, ancient civilizations, ancient history, ghosts, mermaids, giants, space travel, uh, Pokemon. Yeah, not quite a science channel, but it's still science related, so I guess the name fits, and it could still be a cool channel. It's good to explore the unexplained because that's how we make progress, and there could be a way to do it without too much conjecture. I explored the channel, though, and I ended up having quite a few issues with how these topics are handled. It is a fun watch though, so let me show you what I mean. Looking at some of these titles, I think that you get an idea pretty quickly uh, what kind of channel this is. I mean, life on Mars, possible ancient civilization on Mars, um, ancient UFOs, creepy and evil laughter is coming from Alexa. Hmm. That reminds me of someone in particular. Who was that again? Alexa. Are you connected to the CIA? I'm not going to get in bed with you. There are things on here that don't seem too terribly far off. I mean, this uh, door to hell video, I know what that's talking about. It's, it's a real thing. It's not hell, but it's a big hole of fire. A lake found on Mars, you know, could entertain that uh, possibility. So, yeah, uh, some of the stuff seems like it might actually be informative, but a lot of it, I mean, like Curse of the Evil Eye, an ancient curse that still terrifies people today, you know, I'm not so sure about that. So let's watch a couple of videos and see what this looks like. Hey guys, it's Mike Chan. Life is not just a person or place or thing. It's not just an occurrence or a bunch of events all happening in a sequence, cause and effect, and then result. Life escapes us in so many ways, and yet, as human beings, we still try to study it. Some people believe that we have already found the answer. Some believe that the answer to who we are and what is life is rooted in the exploration of space. These thoughts, ponderings, theories, and conspiracies are not without some standing. For example, a CIA remote viewing program reported has discovered an ancient civilization on Mars. Of course, the search for other life beyond Earth has been a cornerstone of modernity and thought. More specifically, there was a program under the name Stargate that focused on subjects and their ability to astral project in a remote viewing, perceiving, and literally placing the mind body anywhere, including other planets. From what I understand, this is actually true that the CIA did do this stuff. Um, remote viewing, yeah, something that the CIA actually did try out. Uh, you know, MK Ultra, mind control, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I think the US government did actually engage in studying a lot of that. That's all pointed out in my comment section a lot. So I think it's pointed out because they think that if I, if I knew about it, then I would accept that all of these things are real, like astral projection is real. Uh, no, I accept that the programs happened, but I also accept that uh, they were abandoned at a certain point because they were found not to work. The US government, like many other governments, has experimented with uh, the paranormal, but eventually actual scientists realized they were kind of being duped and all those things got flushed out of any reputable system, project, or entity. There's some great videos on Holy Kool-Aid's channel about how psychics actually fooled government officials and scientists for quite a while, uh, a few decades ago, so I highly recommend you check that stuff out. So we'll continue, but just acknowledge that these projects, uh, yeah, they were conducted, but did they actually find anything useful? I don't think so. Surprisingly, some of the imagery and details from these mind-body experiences of astral projection and remote viewing have been confirmed. So let's talk about Stargate. How could these things be confirmed? How do you confirm something that was seen through remote viewing unless you view it or measure it in such a way that is done outside of remote viewing? And as you guys probably know, we haven't exactly gone to Mars, and from what the most cutting-edge space programs are telling us, uh, we don't actually have evidence of ancient civilizations. I mean, we have rovers there which haven't found uh, evidence for actual civilizations on Mars. So how exactly is this confirmed? So now let's talk a little bit about the accuracy of remote viewing. This is something that should not be undervalued, that many have written off Stargate as a conspiracy theory. There are other declassified CIA documents that have other operatives focusing on different locales, specifically for military purposes. 
these transcripts and reports always coming to the conclusion that there's significant accuracy in astral projection and remote viewing. There are a lot of claims being made about the reliability and the accuracy of remote viewing. So I'm wondering about these CIA reports. Let's check the sources in the description. Oh my God. Three of the sources are from Gaia.com, which if you saw my video on Gaia, um, not the most reputable source. They tend to just say things without actually citing sources. Citing Gaia is basically like citing Infowars. And you know, you'd think that if there was so much evidence in CIA records that uh, we'd have a bunch of citations here from the CIA, but it looks like we have three Gaia articles, um, one YouTube video, and one thing linking us to CIA.gov. So let's take a look at the CIA bit. Mars exploration, 1984. So far I just see a transcript. Um, I'm not seeing anything else. I'm scrolling to the end. Yeah, you get to the end of this interview. It turns out it's just an interview. There's nothing else on this document that is actually documenting or proving the efficacy of astral projection. Why are we assuming this is anything but a person laying on a table making up stories when they're prompted? So yeah, this CIA document really gets us nowhere. It just tells a story but doesn't provide any proof. So let's go back to Beyond Science and check out something else. First video, not great. Oh my god, I'm getting a Gaia ad on, on this next video. <laughs> very predictable. Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. Every now and then, a new discovery would be the cause of a massive uproar in the fascinating field of archaeology. Examples of such curious relics are the controversial Ica Stones of Peru, which will be our topic in this video. And what's really interesting about these stones is that engraved on some of them are simple images of flowers, fish, and uh, other animals, including extinct ones, such as several species of extinct dinosaurs. Other etchings feature maps, mythical monsters, and beasts, and even depictions of highly advanced medical procedures such as organ transplants and open heart surgery. There are also portrayals of advanced technology including men looking through telescopes and flying objects. The one credited the most for their discovery is a Peruvian physician and collector named Javier Cabrera. From then on, he continued to acquire more stones, specifically from a farmer named Basilio Usuya who told the collector that he had found an abundant source of these carved stones inside a hidden cave somewhere near the Ica River. However, he refused to reveal the exact location of this secret cave, but Told Cabrera that he was willing hmm. to sell I wonder why. Oh, he would sell them to him, but he wouldn't show them where they came from. Hmm, yeah, sounds reputable. He discussed his theories about the Inca stones, arguing that they are tangible evidence that humans actually came from a different planet and that mankind is at least 405 million years old. Other than Cabrera's theories about the Inca stones, archaeological experts who support creationism bring up the same stones as evidence against evolution. There are no archaeological experts who support creationism. If you support creationism, you're not an archaeological expert because creationism is not science. In 1973, the farmer Uz Chuya was interviewed by Swiss author and ancient astronaut theorist Eric von Däniken, during which he admitted that the stones he had sold to collectors were faked and that he copied the images he etched on the stones from books and magazines. He would recant this admission two years later when he was interviewed by a German journalist in 1975. He stated the only reason he was forced to say that the stones were fake was to avoid facing imprisonment for selling archaeological artifacts discovered in the country. But after that, he once again recanted that claim and admitted that the Ica stones he sold were in fact forgeries, and he even demonstrated on a BBC documentary how he managed to make them using chisels, knives, and a dental drill. So let's just say for a moment that these stones were 100% real. If so, this would completely rewrite history. Yeah, the images depicted on the stones would absolutely revolutionize science if, you know, verified, if they were actually authentic. But if you look at this skeptically, the person who discovered the stones wouldn't say where he got them. Uh, later when put under pressure, legal pressure, he said that they were fake. Later he said they were real so that he could start selling them again. And then he finally said, no, they're actually fake. It's not that scientists just don't want to change their minds uh, given the information given on these stones. It's that we have really, really solid evidence for the age of the earth, the shape of the earth, when certain technologies were invented, when certain animals lived in the past and what other animals lived at the same time as them. Combine the monumental evidence against it with the fact that the guy actually has admitted multiple times that these are forgeries, why would we actually give this any credibility? I think that if you are actually scientifically literate, you understand 
why the case is kind of closed here. My general uh, sense when I was in there looking at the stones and talking to this gentleman, and this is just my own personal opinion, you, you do not have to agree with this, but, but I believed what he was telling me. And look, I'm not a gullible guy, because like I mentioned mm, countless times on this channel, I, I do believe that ancient human advanced civilizations have existed, because there's just too many things around the world that, that we just cannot explain unless some high-tech civilization existed before us. I don't think the host really understands the gravity of this situation. Some of the most reliable scientific findings and ideas that we have would have to be thrown out if we accepted these stones which don't actually have a whole lot of evidence for their authenticity. I, I don't think the host realizes that, and I think that he is kind of a gullible guy, honestly. Let's talk about this channel's creator, Mike Chen, for a minute. The guy is incredibly prolific and talented. From what I can tell, he has at least five different YouTube channels, which have all had remarkable success, and he seems like a genuinely likable guy. It seems most of his other content across his channels revolves around food and travel. Beyond Science seems to be a bit of an outlier for him, even though it's his most subscribed channel. From what I've been able to tell, Mike doesn't appear to have a science background, and he's more of a talented filmmaker and personality than anything, which is totally fine. I won't say that a non-scientist can't make excellent science videos, because that's apparently false. Just check out channels like Vice Rhino and Polygia if you want to see just how well non-scientists can pull it off. I don't think Beyond Science does this well at all, though. Yeah, the channel does largely deal with the unexplained, but I don't think it utilizes actual scientific knowledge or methodology competently when exploring it. Science is a tool for exploring the unexplained, and from watching this channel, I don't think Mike knows how it's used. So far though, I find this channel less dangerous than Gaia if only for the fact that it barely touches on alternative medicine. As all of you should know by now, I'm entirely against using treatments which are not evidence-based for medical issues. Relying on it could mean abandoning evidence-based treatments and subsequently worsening one's condition. I mean, you could die if you do that, so I discourage it. So I'm glad I don't see much of that here. I do still see the information here as harmful though, because it's misinformation that hinders our actual progress in exploring the unexplained. How many more great scientists could we have if millions of people didn't fill their heads with conspiracies masquerading as science while they forsake science methodology entirely? I do wonder if Mike acknowledges that in any way. Uh, let's see if he has any videos which shed some light on his personal views a little more. Cheshire Smile says, I'm gonna start my own exorcism business, maybe call it less possessed. Okay, so here in this video, I also talked about, besides the flying dragon, I also talked about a phenomenon that there's not enough exorcists in the world. Like, we're, nobody wants to do exorcisms because uh, they're scary. So Miss Smile's comment about starting her own exorcism business, I think that's a great venture. You know what? No. Supply and demand, right? There's a lot of demons wandering about, no. probably because people still think Ouija boards are toys and buying them for their kids, and there's not enough exorcists. And that's why I was trying to tell you guys in the video, you'll never be unemployed because the supply seem to never dwindle. Also oh my god. No. This is a horribly harmful thing to encourage. I mean, exorcism and demon possession, those are basically just outdated ideas about mental illness. Encouraging people to actually go out and perform exorcisms, that's basically encouraging people with no science education to go and try to heal people or cure people who are maybe even violently mentally ill. Going to perform an exorcism is a great way to get everyone hurt. I think that exorcism is is really just, uh, I think it's a kind of abuse of the mentally ill. Uh, not to mention that the exorcist can be an incredible danger if they're going and basically screaming and re reciting these verses at someone who might be having some kind of incredible violent breakdown that they should be medicated for. I lost a good amount of respect for Mike uh, hearing that, actually. He seemed to be really open-minded when it comes to things like this, aliens, time travel, mermaids. Is there anything in pop culture like this that you don't buy into? Not trying to be a jerk, just curious. Well, I make it a point. Um, Edgar to really try to be as open-minded as possible. I mean, is there a point where you become too open-minded or maybe too gullible? I, yes. I think that there is a point you can get to where you are that, but I feel like being open-minded about things is the only way human beings can can move forward, can the, the only way people get better, become smarter, become more technologically advanced as we aim for the impossible. We surpass our limits. We explore the unexplored. I think I get what he's saying, and I think I understand him a lot more just from that comment there. I do think we have to be open-minded to be able to move forward, and I do think that we can be too gullible in that process. I 
think Mike is one of the people who is a bit too gullible in that process. The reason being that he seems to say that he, he believes in things um, because of what we don't know, rather than saying he believes in things because of what we do know. The fact that we don't know certain things is not really a great reason to conclude that certain things are true or are really even likely. I'll get into that a little bit later, but I, I think that that is where Mike is coming from. In my recent video about Gaia, I said that their intent was rather selfish and manipulative. I don't know that I see beyond science that way, though. It doesn't seem to be selling an idea of perfect health, happiness, and secret knowledge like Gaia. I do still think it depends on an audience who is scientifically illiterate, and I'm sure plenty of them are seeking kind of privileged information because it makes them feel special. But I don't think this channel preys on emotional vulnerability in quite the same way. Its spread of information is still harmful, but I think it springs from ignorance, not malice. I thought I'd wrap this all up by quickly responding to a couple of common objections I got in the comment section of my Gaia video, which I'm sure I'll get here too. The first is that in calling BS on the content of these videos, I didn't debunk them because I didn't prove 100% that they're wrong, and I didn't provide a more accurate explanation of the phenomenon they're describing incorrectly. That objection fundamentally misunderstands healthy skepticism, though. If someone makes a claim, the burden is on them to prove that claim. It's not on others to disprove it. Otherwise, we could propose that literally any conceivable idea is true until it's proven false, and that is an approach loaded with impractical assumptions. When videos like these make claims, but then don't back them up with reputable sources or any sources at all, there's absolutely no reason to entertain their claims seriously. That which is asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. No alternative explanation needed. The most common objection people voice is that I'm dogmatically closed-minded because I don't entertain these ideas like they do. To that I say, it's not closed-minded to require solid evidence for a claim before you accept it. I'm not afraid of the truth about aliens, conspiracies, alternative medicine, and all that stuff. I just don't want to be misinformed, and I do my absolute best to see through misinformation when it's presented, which is extremely often. I'm pretty open-minded. I mean, I escape from religious fundamentalism. I'm just constantly mindful that I'm not so open-minded that my brain falls out. In closing, I'll say that I'm very much in favor of exploring the unexplained. I'm just very much against ineffective approaches to that process. Beyond Science could be a helpful or at least harmless channel in that endeavor if its creator was scientifically literate. Unfortunately, it'll likely continue on encouraging people to place confidence in empty conjecture for the sake of entertainment. But hey, why diligently apply ourselves to methodically solving the mysteries of the unexplained when we could instead entertain ourselves with those mysteries while putting forth as little effort as possible? Thanks for watching. I've been Drew of Genetically Modified Skeptic. Remember to check out all the channels that I just mentioned in passing here. They're all linked in the card box. As always, go ahead and subscribe. Check out my Patreon. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook at GM Skeptic. Join my Discord. And until next time, stay skeptical.